Good morning and welcome from First Baptist Church of Talmadge. We're here for Resurrection or Palm Sunday and the triumphant entry of Christ into Jerusalem. What a day that must have been and wouldn't it have been great to be there. And we're excited to bring that message to you this morning. And uh, as we, this week commemorates also our 82nd uh, anniversary of First Baptist Church of Talmadge as we were founded way back in 1938. Uh, so we will also continue to reach out to you during the week, so watch for Facebook or notifications about Zoom meetings. This Friday we're planning on doing a uh, Good Friday service and we'll give you more details about that later. For right now we're going to have uh, Brandon come up and uh, do a special music for us before uh, we get into our scripture reading. So we miss everybody and if you're on watching on Facebook or YouTube, please comment in the comment section so we can know you're listening and uh, we get encouraged by knowing that you're out there and, and we're able to minister to you. So take it away, Brandon. Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. 
bed. I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, turn me back. Oh, turn me back. Thank you, Brandon. Minute, we'll have him play the guitar for the new piano for us. Again, welcome to First Baptist Church of Talmadge on Palm Sunday as we celebrate the Lord's triumphant entry. And again, we can't stress enough how much we miss you and how glorious it's going to be when we all get back together. Uh, we, who knows, it may be with the Lord instead of First Baptist Church of Talmadge, but we're excited about seeing you again. And uh, we've enjoyed our Bible studies uh, together. Uh, and we've been doing some things on Zoom. We had a Zoom broadcast on Friday and a lot of participation there. And God willing, Monday and Wednesday we'll have Facebook. Actually, all this week will be on Facebook. Um, uh, and then Friday culminating with a, uh, uh, a Good Friday service that was initially scheduled to go over to our friends at Forest Hill Community Church, but that will be done on Facebook now. So for our scripture reading, if you want to turn there this morning, uh, John chapter 12, uh, verses 12 through 19. John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, that would have been the feast of the Passover, they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, the, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remember they these things, were, that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead bear record for this cause the people also met him for that they had heard that he had done this miracle and then verse 19 the Pharisees therefore said among themselves perceive ye how ye prevail nothing behold the world is gone after him let's let's pray dear Lord thank you for this time you've given us father and we thank you, Lord. It's a little, it's a different experience for us in our lifetime to be able to, to come here this morning with an empty uh, congregation, many for the first time in their lives, not being in church for, uh, res or for, for a, a Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry of, of Christ. And the same will be true next week for the first time in most of our lives. We won't be in congregation uh, for Easter. And I just pray that there will be a quietness in each home, that everybody will have their Bible out, and that the devil will not use this as a tool to divide families and to get them to splinter because of all the time they're spending together, Lord. I just pray that rather that it would be the bringing in of the third great awakening in our nation's history, that families can come together and to be able to open their Bibles together, maybe for the first time, and that they would, and thank you, Lord, for the technology that allows us to do this Whereas 50 years ago, 25 years ago, we couldn't have done these things other than by radio. Lord, I just thank you for uh, our church family and, and the love that uh, shows that how, in how much we miss each other. Just bless Clyde as he preaches uh, this morning. In Jesus' precious name, I pray, amen. So we're going to sing, you can, if you know this song along with us, The King is Coming, The King is Coming. This brand new place is white. This weekend had 
uh, it could be the worst week and it could make some afraid, but the Bible says that in Psalms 23, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And that's the very verse that we have on our church sign. So we're welcoming Clyde to preach this morning. And uh, he, it's, it's fitting that he would preach today since he's the son of First Baptist Church of Thomas, having been here from childhood as we celebrate this week our 82nd year. So Clyde. Thank you, Pastor. Like Pastor said, I've been here since I was a child. I dreamed as a child that maybe someday I could preach the gospel, and that's what Pastor Kate always wanted. The founder of the church. I hope I turn this thing on. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's a, a blessing to be able to be here. 82 years I've been here this long, but as a child, I, I've been able to be in the church, and I've always wanted to be an uh, opportunity to preach the gospel. And Jane and Mary's out there, and Roxanne's out there, and Jeff and them's out there. It's been there since the beginning. So it's a real blessing. Uh, uh, Brandon, I'm just going to go straight into the scripture instead of back and forth with John. So I'll just know what the scriptures are, and we'll just start at the top and work our way down. I uh, hate to do that to you, but. It'll make it a little bit shorter and a lot easier and less reading. But in, in verse 12, it doesn't have to be up there, but in verse 12 it says that, that Jesus came to Jerusalem. I like what Luke said in uh, Luke 19, 28 through 34. And it says, according to what uh, Luke says about Jesus coming in, and when he had spoken, he went before ascending into Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he was nigh unto Bethphage and Bethphage at the mount called Olive. That's where he always went and prayed. That's where he went up to, and that's where he'll come back to. The scripture says he sent two of his disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, in which they entered, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon Never a man sat it, left uh, on him, and bring him unto me. And if any man asks you, why are you using you him, this colt? Thou shalt say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way, and found, even as he had said unto them, and as they were loosing the colt, the owner of the colt came out and asked, Why did you loose this colt? And they said, As Christ said, they said unto him, The Lord hath need of him. You know, it's a blessing because Christ is going to be on a donkey. It says, A baby of a donkey that was brand new, never been ridden before. You know, it, it's kings that uh, came into the city. And the other thing it says is, the people prepared the way in, in verse 13 of our scripture that we read. It says that the people prepared the way. They cut off branches um, of the trees, of the palm trees, and laid them down. And uh, they put down their coats. And it says in the Bible that the disciples put their coats over top of the donkey as Christ rode in to Jerusalem. And this was another sign of royalty. You know, it's like we see when royalty comes in into the world. They lay out a red carpet. And that's exactly what the palm branches were in the people. And they're singing Hosanna under him. In this, we also see three types of people that were, that were meeting Christ uh, there in Jerusalem. The first type we'll see is believers. One that had believed in Jesus Christ because of the miracles that we'll get into and see what they had found. The other ones are the unbelievers, the ones that have come to see him uh, bring forth miracles. You know, they wanted to see some more signs. It says in the scripture that they had heard about him coming. They heard about the miracles that he had done. And then, of course, our favorite people were right there where Christ always had his heels. It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And we're going to see why they were there and what their problem was. It says that the king was coming. 
It says in, in verse 15 of what we read this morning, the daughters of Zion. You know, Scripture compares with Scripture. You know, it wouldn't be right if you just go into the Old New Testament without the Old Testament. Where that quote is is in Ezekiel that chapter 9, verse 9. And it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion, shout, O daughters of Jerusalem, behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just, and he has salvation, lonely or humble, riding upon a donkey, upon a colt. It says, so it was told way before Jesus came unto Jerusalem, and that they knew that this was supposed to happen. The daughters of Zion of the Israelites and the Jews that heard that Jesus Christ was coming. And in verse 16, it says that Jesus is going to be glorified and lifted up. And uh, that's found in John. We'll stay in John the rest of this uh, passage. It's found in John chapter 1. Sorry. And you know, I was just thinking this morning, and I, I did some changing on uh, Brandon this morning and put this verse in there. But I was thinking this morning, the Lord laid on me, and Pastor knows how that is. You get your sermon together, and then all of a sudden, you know, the Lord lays something else on you. But I was thinking about it, how that this whole week was fitting to fit in with the uh, coming of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. First of all, uh, on, on uh, our meeting in the back there, Pastor brought the message about the Word, the Word of God, and how that it was brought to the people. And that, uh, and this is where Christ and the Word is alive. And, and I was thinking about it. Then we also bring in on Wednesday, um, in Zoom, when we did Zoom, Pastor and Roy filled in for me. My computer wasn't working. And they brought out about, uh, quiet time. And how the, the word was brought to the people, but yet we have to have quiet time. We have to study the word. And then also on Friday, we had uh, Roy bring out that uh, the gospel and, and the Holy Spirit, how we're sealed until the day of redemption. And you know, when we did J.R., J., the junior kids at the school, JYC, you know, this is one of their verses that was the first one to begin. And I thought it was fitting. Because this, this also goes with the First Baptist Church of Kelmich for 82 years, what we've been preaching and being in. And it says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, uh, through 3, and then we're going to do 10 through um, 14. But it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was nothing made. So we see in the beginning was the word. See, the word of God. These are not stories. These are real things. In the beginning, Jesus is the word, it says here. And the word was brought. And this was the reason why he came. And even before the foundation of the world, Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit was there. And uh, in uh, 10 through 14, it says, And he was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. See, that's the way it was. In Jerusalem they came in, and his own rejected him, it says. In verse 11 it says that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came to the Jews, he came to, to, the, to the Israelites, and he brought the gospel unto them. And they had the record beforehand. They brought the record up that Jesus was coming, and this is his triumphant coming. In verse 12 it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he, which is the right or the authority to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that's what it takes to, to be a Christian, that we believe that Jesus did come. That we believe that if we believe in his name, that he did come and he died on the cross, which we'll get into next week. Which was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. He was born of God. Mary was a virgin, and there was no man involved there, just the Holy Spirit. 
Verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He brought forth the truth in the beginning. He brought forth the glory. We had the glory they had back then, the glory of Jesus Christ. We have the glory of Jesus Christ in our churches today. And uh, it says that uh, he brought into remembrance. It says that they were brought into remembrance. In that scripture the pastor read, it says that they didn't know at that time when Jesus was coming in what, what it was all about. But Jesus told them, don't worry. After my death, burial, and resurrection, it will be clear to you what the, what, um, the gospel is speaking about. And it was brought into remembrance. And that's found in John 14. John 14, 26. And here it is. This is what he said to bring it into remembrance. How could they have this in remembrance? If they didn't know, if they didn't know, you know, when he was on the earth, what made a difference after his death, burial, and resurrection? Because of this verse right here. It says, but the comforter, he says, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things unto you in remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now in today's time, we have the Holy Spirit when we receive Jesus Christ. Roy mentioned that on Friday, that the Holy Spirit sealed us until that day of redemption. Back then it was only the Holy Spirit would come and go. But today, we have the Holy Spirit as soon as we receive Him. The Holy Spirit also is the one of the three, of the, of the Trinity of three, is the one that convicts us of our sins and that we need Christ into our life. And uh, it brought out in, in uh, what Pastor read in 17 and 18, and it says that they wanted to see Jesus' miracles. Now, what miracles did they really come about? You know, that's found in verse 12, what Pastor read last week in, in our message about Christ and sitting at Mary's feet. At the end of that, it brought it into what, what was going to be the, the truth today. And that miracle is them that they have seen, and it was there, waiting on Jesus to come in, was found in uh, John 12, 10 and 11. And it says, But the chief priest consulted that they might put all right, last verse. Thank you. Thank you, boy, he gets at you when he blocks your mind up here, no matter if the people are here or not. But anyway, he, he says that my foot Lazarus also to death. Man, they said this guy, Christ raised him from the dead, you know, and, and he's a living example. He's a living example. That's what we are as Christians today. We're the living example to spread the gospel, whom he has raised from the dead. Lazarus was a, just an evidence that Christ was showing that, you know, you can be dead, buried, on resurrection, that there is a resurrection in Jesus Christ. And verse 10 says, uh, 11, because that he resumed of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Because of Lazarus being raised from the dead, people believed in Jesus Christ back then. People believed that, that he was the Christ. He was the Son of God if he could raise a man from the dead. And these are the miracles. There were, some of them were there hoping that he'd do more miracles. We also, when Pastor brings forth the message next week, he'll brought out maybe about how he went to, Christ went before Herod, and Herod wanted to meet him. He said, oh, I want to see this man that brought forth all kinds of miracles. You know, that's all it is. That's what the world wants to see. In Jesus Christ, they say, well, if I get saved, will he do this for me? Will he do that for me? Will he take care of all my financial needs? It brings back a, a song that I remember from the past. And it says, I never promised you a rose garden. And that, you know, and, and I always thought, you know, in the earlier years that Christianity was that way. If I got saved, everything would be hunky dory. But, you know, the scripture says that Christ didn't say that he'll put you through everything or take everything away from us. It's just like the footprints in the sand 
it says that he'll be right there. He'll carry you through everything. And even in this time that we have now in trouble and this virus that goes apart, you know, if you have Christ, he's carrying you through. He'll take care of you. I also think about the, uh, the uh, back when the uh, Israelites were in uh, Egypt and God sent Moses to bring them out and did signs and wonders and different things to show the king that they needed to bring the people out. But I also remember that when the death angel came and he passed over, and this is going with the scripture of Christ, that's what they were coming to the feast for, was the Passover supper. And here's the other thing, that, they, that, they, that the angel would pass over the Christians that put on the blood, the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, and the firstborn wasn't taken away. You know, another thing about it was, uh, and Luke, he mentions about why the Pharisees and the Sadducees were so upset about Jesus Christ. And, and uh, it says that uh, because of all the works that he'd done and because of all that they had taken away from him. But we see in verse 19 of what Pastor read in John, we also see that the Pharisees were afraid. Why were they afraid? They were the great rulers of the whole thing. But you know, they, they really, we really want to know why they, they were afraid. We really want to know why they had it against Jesus Christ. And you know, this is some of the problems with our world today. And it's found in John chapter 11. Oh yeah, just uh, right before it. And we need to turn my Bible. And it was mentioned earlier too. In John chapter 11, verses 47 and 48. And it says, then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees as, as counselors and said, What do we? For this man does many miracles. It says, If we let him thou alone, now if we leave him alone, the man will believe, the people will believe, men will believe on him. And get this, here's why they were worried. It says, And the Romans shall come and take away both our place, that means their authority as the priesthood, as the rulers of the scripture, and also take away our nation. So they were afraid that if Jesus won all these people over to them, and they didn't believe that the Romans would hear about it, and Rome was over them, and they would come in and take away everything that, that, that they might have. And you know, when Jesus went to Pilate, and he went to hear it back and forth. That was a big thing there, too. Because the first thing they told Pilate, Pilate was, hey, you know, you're, you'll go against Rome. If you don't crucify him, you'll go against Rome. That I don't want to take away from Pastor's message next week. But you see, here is the, is the fear. And you know, that's the thing of, of, of the world today. The world's so afraid of this virus and how it's going to take it out. And, and, and if they trust the Lord, for their salvation will cure everything. It won't cure everything. You know, I was telling some people about, you know, the, the gospel, and I was talking to a buddy of mine that I know years ago, and uh, he was talking about the virus and how bad it was. And I even brought up about that scripture about how that, you know, back in the day, Christ, Moses, uh, death angel passed over people, and how God put a hedge about his people. You know, I believe that's the day too. And he brought back a scripture that I didn't think about. He brought back a scripture that said, what about this? That the just, it'll rain upon the just and the unjust alike. You know, so we can get the virus. But you know what I told him? I said, you know what the glory about the whole thing is? No matter what happens, and, I, and my wife and I talk, no matter what happens, if this virus takes us, it just means we get to go to heaven quicker. Yeah. You know, you, you can find Christ Either in the world or you can find him in the word. But you know what? Right here is the guidepost. This is what Jesus Christ brought us the word today. So that we might be able to preach the gospel. And so that anybody can read the word and ask the Holy Spirit to guide them. The other thing about it is all we have to do is believe that Jesus Christ did come into Jerusalem. Did die on the cross. Was buried. Was risen again. And all our problems won't be solved. But he'll walk along with us and guide and protect us. Let's pray. Our grace, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your many blessings, Lord. Lord, we thank you that Jesus did come to the earth. 
that your son did die on the cross, that he did rose again. Lazarus is an example of that. Lord, these are not stories in the Bible. This is true. They bear witness. And because of these witnesses, it came down true. And Lord, I just pray for First Baptist Church, been here 82 years, Lord, that it'll carry on. Lord, we pray that you be with the ministry. Lord, we pray that you be with your Christians that are out there today. I pray that you put a hedge about them. I pray that you put a hedge about our government. I pray that you put a hedge about our people, Lord. Lord, I pray in these trying times of this virus, Lord, that people will turn to you and see that you will carry them through no matter what. And that someday after death, they'll be able to be resurrected again and be with you instead of being cast into the lake of fire. Lord, we give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.